We want to welcome to stage our next student. Is it working? Can you hear me? Hello. So we have two people to introduce to you right now. The first is a Valley High senior, Lainey Abrahamson, and with her is Senator Rick Santorum. Big Valley High round of applause. I'm Lainey Abrahamson. We're all very fortunate to go to a school with as many opportunities as Valley. With all we have to offer, it is hard to know what activities are going on. So I feel that we need to better communicate to students what they can be a part of at their school. My most important goal is to get students involved. This can be accomplished through communications from students to students. For example, saying to each other, hey, let's try out for the play, or want to go to the football game on Friday? But this can also come from the administration to the students. They can organize pep rallies and assemblies to get people excited for upcoming events and use advisory to communicate opportunities for student involvement. Involvement can come through participation and attendance, making it important for both of these to be encouraged to all students. When we feel part of something in our school, we are better connected with it. Another thing I would like to see is better communication of student opinions. We have few opportunities for those who are not in student council to give their opportunity to give their views on what they think about changes in the school. One thing we did was a few weeks ago. If you remember, we voted. We had the opportunity to vote for candidates. The voting ballot also had five questions relating to school policy. The opportunity for students to give their opinion like this can help administration implement ideas that will receive a positive response from students. I think the most important thing as young people is to get involved. And now we have a presidential candidate here to speak with us. He is a former senator from Pennsylvania, and he's been married for 21 years with seven kids and took time out of his busy day to be here with us. So let's give a warm welcome to Senator Santorum. Thank you. Go Tigers! All right, it, you guys must be very, very important to get all these press people here to cover you. Uh, it's great to be here. Thank you so much. Let me thank Rock the Vote for uh, for inviting me here. In fact, inviting all the candidates here. I'm I'm uh, excited to be here. I'm here with uh, some friends uh, and uh, and some family. Uh, my friend here is uh, Matt Schultz, who's the Secretary of State uh, for uh, uh, for for the state of Iowa. And uh, Matt has been a uh, a good a dear friend and great advisor to me over the past uh, a few few months, not just a few weeks. And of course, my family. Uh, Karen and I, as Laney said, have been married for 21 years, and we have been blessed with, to raise seven children. And uh, six of the seven are here with you uh, uh, today. They, our littlest one, who's three and a half, is not here with us, but uh, we are we are excited to be here. And, and of course, the head of the household uh, and been the rock that's been able to allow me to go out and be at 380 town hall meetings in the state of Iowa over the past year uh, is my wife Karen. So I just want to introduce you to them and. And thank you for welcoming us here to, uh, to Valley High School. I know that uh, this is a big, uh, big moment. Uh, all of you are going to have an opportunity to be able to vote in the, uh, in the caucuses tonight. And obviously, I encourage you to do so. This is an, an important moment for our country. We're at a critical path. Every generation, every generation of leaders has an obligation to be able to pass on to the next generation something greater. I was very fortunate. Uh, we. Uh, I was raised in a family that was an immigrant family. My, my father and my grandfather were, uh, were immigrants to this country. My dad came when he was all of seven years of age. And it was instilled in me the greatness of our country, the foundational freedoms. My grandfather left. In fact, he left my father and, and, and uh, the rest of the family behind when, in 1925 during Mussolini's reign in Italy, leading up to World War II. And, he was not a fan of fascism and Mussolini. And he came to this country because he wanted to live in a country that believed in him, that believed in free people, that believed in the opportunity that any person could rise in society if they worked hard, got a good education, and played by the rules. That's what America always stood for, that bottom-up, entrepreneurial, individual spirit based upon strong families that molded and, and instilled values that were important for you to be success, like hard work and honesty and integrity. That is the real greatness of America. 
I would make the argument that there's a lot of people in America today, and unfortunately some in the White House, who don't believe that anymore, who don't believe that America is a great country because we are great, because we have great people who build great things from the bottom up, but that America could be better if we built things from the top down. That may be the way other countries have done it. In fact, it is. But a lot of people who, come, who are in this country left those countries because, like my grandfather, they wanted a country that believed in him. He didn't get that kind of education. He was a coal miner. He ended up working in the coal mines till he was 72 years old. But he believed that if he could do his part, make the sacrifices that were necessary, that maybe someday his son would be able and, and, and daughter would be able to go to, to college someday, which fortunately they were able to do. And now here his grandson is standing and running for President of the United States. That is a great country because we believe in free people and the ability to build something from the bottom up. You have a very tough, tough choice to make. There are a lot of great candidates who are going to be out there, up, and they've, many of them have spoken already. But you need to, to focus in on who is that candidate who has the vision for America, that's going to believe in the founding principles of our country and build this country, well, like our founders did in believing in those, those, free, those freedoms that I've described. You know, I've always worked and, and, and talked to young people for all throughout my congressional career. I was elected in the Senate uh, as the youngest United States Senator by far. I was 36 years old. I think the next youngest was 20 years older than I was. And I was the second youngest when I was elected to the House. And I took a special, re special responsibility to go out and meet with young people. I met with every high school group that ever came to visit me in Washington, D.C because I wanted to remind them of some basic things. Number one. Okay, number two. Uh, <laughs> I'll move along. Number one. And people would come and they'd say, oh, they want their picture with me. Would you sign this? And, and it was great. I mean, it was wonderful that people were that respectful. But I always reminded young people that, that I work for you, not the other way around. And that you have to hold your representatives accountable and your president accountable. You may like them. They may be nice people. But you need to hold them accountable for what they do and the policies that are putting forward. And that means you have to be involved as citizens. You've got to read those, uh, those, those blogs. You've got to read, the, read the, the, the news wires. You've got to have an understanding of what's going on in this country. Every decision that's going to be made here in the next few years, whether Obamacare is repealed or whether it's kept in place, whether taxes are going to grow, whether this deficit that is now crushing the economy and will crush your pocketbooks in the future is going to be dealt with so you won't have a lower standard of living. Those are the issues. You need to hold the president, presidential candidates, members of Congress accountable because it's your future. I know you're worried about your education. You're worried about the job you're going to get. Those are short-term worries. The longer-term problems are the ones that are going to affect you more profoundly. Hold those candidates to the standard of solving the intractable problems of an exploding federal government, of an exploding debt that's going to crush your economic future. Make sure that they stand up and deal with these systemic problems of entitlements. They deal with the systemic problems of a government that is doing more and more and giving you less and less freedom. That's what I would challenge you. Take a look. There are different ways of solving these problems. Barack Obama has one way, and I have another. Look at them. Make sure they're real. Make sure that you can see how we can accomplish this vision of getting this economy going, not just in a short-term stimulus, but for long-term stable growth so you and your family can live free and prosper in a safe country. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for your interest in, in being here today. I thank Rock the Vote for what they're doing, and I wish you much success in your first vote at the caucus. Thank you, and God bless you.